Good morning, chapter 15. The Herman W. Block Memorial Library's air conditioning didn't work very good, and there was only a fan. And from the minute me and Win Dixie got in the library, he hogged it all. He laid right in front of it and wagged his tail and let it blow his fur all around. Some of his fur was pretty loose, and it blew right off of him like a dandelion puff. I worried about him hogging the fan, and I worried about the fan blowing him bald. But Miss Franny Block said not to worry about either of those things. That when Dixie could hog the fan if he wanted, and she had never in her life seen a dog made bald by a fan. Sometimes, when Miss Franny was telling a story, she would have a fit. They were small fits, and they didn't last long. But what happened was she would forget what she was saying. She would just stop and start to shake like a little leaf. And when that happened, when Dixie would get up from the fan and sit right on Miss Franny Block's side, he would sit up tall, protecting her, with his ears standing up straight on his head like soldiers. And when Miss Franny stopped shaking and started talking again, when Dixie would lick her hand and lie back down in front of the fan. Whenever Miss Franny had one of her fits, it reminded me of when Dixie and the thunderstorm. There were a lot of thunderstorms that summer. And I got real good at holding on to Win Dixie whenever they came. I held on to him and comforted him and whispered to him and rocked him just the same way he tried to comfort Miss Franny when she had her fits. Only I held on to Win Dixie for another reason too. I held on to him tight so he wouldn't run away. It all made me think about Gloria Dump. I wondered who comforted her when she heard those bottles knocking together, those ghosts chattering about the things she had done wrong. I wanted to comfort Gloria. And I decided that the best way to do that would be to read her a book, read it to her loud enough to keep the ghosts away. So I asked Miss Franny, I said, Miss Franny, I've got a grown up friend whose eyes are going on her and I would like to read her a book out loud. Do you have any suggestions? Suggestions? Miss Franny said, yes ma'am, I have suggestions. Of course I do, I have suggestions. How about Gone with the Wind? What's that about? I asked her. Why, said Miss Franny, it's a wonderful story about the Civil War. The Civil War, I said. Do not tell me you've never heard of the Civil War. Miss Franny Block looked like she was going to faint. She waved her hands in front of her face. I know about the Civil War, I told her. That was the war between the South and the North over slavery. Slavery, yes, said Miss Franny. It was also about states' rights and money. It was a terrible war. My great-grandfather fought in that war. He was just a boy. Your great-grandfather? Yes, ma'am. Lit Miss W. Block. Now there's a story. When Dixie yawned real big and laid down on his side with a thump and a sigh. I swear he knew that phrase. Now there's a story. And he knew it meant we weren't going anywhere anytime soon. Go ahead and tell me, Miss Franny, I said. And I sat down cross-legged next to Win Dixie. I pushed him and tried to get some share of the fan, but he pretended he was asleep and he wouldn't move. I was all settled in and ready for a good story when the door banged and pinch-faced Amanda Wilkinson came in. Win Dixie sat up and stared at her. He tried out a smile on her, but she didn't smile back, so he laid down again. I'm ready for another book, Amanda said, slamming her book down on Miss Franny's desk. Well, said Miss Franny, maybe you won't mind waiting. I'm telling India Opal a story about my great grandfather. You are, of course, more than welcome to listen. It will just be one minute. Amanda sighed a real big dramatic sigh and stared, stared past me. She pretended like she wasn't interested, but she was. I could tell. Come sit over here, said Miss Franny. I'll stand, thank you, said Amanda. Suit yourself, Miss Franny shrugged. Now where was I? Oh yes, Litmus, Litmus W. Block.